The well-being of coastal communities and broader society is inextricably linked with the natural world through the range of ecosystem services provided by marine and coastal environments. Ecosystem services include the contribution of fisheries to food security and incomes, but also less obvious regulatory, supporting and cultural services, such as climate and flood regulation, erosion control, as well as supporting recreational activities and tourism. However, these marine and coastal ecosystems face a range of threats, including habitat destruction, pollution and over-exploitation. Climate change also has a range of potential negative impacts on marine and coastal ecosystems and the communities that depend on them. These include sea level rise, more frequent and intense storms, and impacts on living resources through changes in ocean temperatures and acidity. While the health of marine and coastal ecosystems can be undermined by climate change, these ecosystems can also form an important part of climate adaptation responses and strengthen the resilience of coastal communities. Climate change is here to stay and uh, we need uh, to find ways to, to adapt to it while at the same time ensuring that uh, the ecosystem uh, upon which we depend for, uh, for our life remains as intact as possible. For example, mangroves can help to uh, protect inland areas from the effects of rising sea levels, from the effects of more storms coming from the oceans, and uh, also help to protect uh, coastal erosion. Nature-based solutions to climate challenges are referred to as Ecosystem-Based Adaptation, or EBA. This may include the sustainable management, conservation and restoration of coastal ecosystems, such as mangroves, coral reefs, coastal dunes and estuaries. Ecosystem-based adaptation uh, implies sustainability, that people's activities on the environment are not degrading to the environment. We are using an integrated approach, an integrated approach that looks at the different resources, whether it is mangroves, coral reefs, seagrass beds, but also by looking at the different institutions that have a mandate or a stake in the management of these resources. The biodiversity and the ecosystem services are used in order to help people adapt to climate change. This strategy helps to create climate resilience. EBA is increasingly recognized as an important adaptation strategy within global and national climate change processes, including the United Nations Global Climate Change Negotiations and related nationally determined contributions. Effective EBA requires the involvement of coastal communities, in particular, marginalized groups such as the poor, youth and women. Furthermore, EBA must include climate change, ecological and social development components. Failure to do sustainable exploitation uh, of our coastal areas will impact on women and children. And it is therefore important that this process is done in a holistic manner to ensure that uh, we bring everyone on board. If we sustainably manage our coastal and marine resources, then it is likely that they will provide more diverse and robust ecosystem services that will have a very direct bearing on the quality of lives that people lead. There is significant potential to expand EBA in Africa's marine and coastal environments. This may include standalone EBA projects or EBA in combination with hard engineering responses. Successful marine and coastal EBA requires a number of issues to be addressed, namely policy development and alignment, regional cooperation, access to finance, capacity building and peer learning. And many of the issues uh, related to the ocean are shared between countries and often addressing them at a national level is not sufficient. EBA is very important, however it's also a challenging issue for communities because most of the projects developed for communities are not bankable projects. We should bring the private sector to the scene because they have a lot to, to, to contribute but we also need to make things appealing for them uh, so that they are not just financing, but also they need to get something uh, uh, back. A regional approach enables countries to actually have shared learning, exchange of information, 
uh, capacity mobility among others. Why EBA is important, especially for IRA, is we want to learn from other organizations. While regional collaboration is critical, but the interventions at the national level within the different national context are actually even more critical because that is where work happens. The South African Institute of International Affairs has implemented a project that examines EBA in Southern Africa. This project focuses on research, dialogue, policy alignment and capacity building activities. It seeks to support peer learning among the four focus countries. The project also supports the broader uptake of project lessons by working closely with the SADC Secretariat and other regional organisations. With our partners, we are contributing to more resilient, sustainable and prosperous communities in Southern Africa and the broader region.